Good morning and welcome to this week's Grow where we gather to recharge, organize, and work here as members of MWEG. We are continuing our series of our Simply Connect that um, we are working on this summer. If you're not familiar with that, I can put a link to Simply Connect in the chat. Uh, we, it is a program that each week we have some ways that you can connect with your community or, and family and others around you. And there's some suggestions with different levels of time commitment. None of them are huge time commitments unless you plan ahead and choose that. Um, this week, we have been focusing on connecting with creation and we are so glad to have Paulette um, Stoffner, right? Is it? It's Paulette Stoffer Henriad. Oh, Henriad. I, like I, I see part of it. Anyway, we're okay. so glad to have her. She is from our MWEG Nevada chapter and she's the co-coordinator, co-leader of the chapter, right? And then we have Christy Carter-Bake who is our um, advocacy director of Caring for Creation here at MWEG. So they are gonna talk to us today about how we can connect with creation and some suggestions and maybe ways that they've create, uh, connected. If you want to share in the chat or in the comments on the Facebook discussion group, ways that you have done that this week or are planning to do that this summer, we'd love to hear some ideas that we can share with other people. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the time over to Paulette and Christy. Thanks, Rachel. Um, we're just kind of going off of our um, Simply Connect plan for connecting with creation on our website um, and just going to kind of talk through some of our ideas. Um, we'd love to hear some of yours. This is kind of a cumulative list of things that um, we like to do or that other people have suggested. So if you have any great ideas, we'd love to hear them and add to our collection of ways on how to care for or connect with creation, um, which also helps you want to care for creation more, right? Um, having the connection and the sense of belonging um, makes you want to have stewardship over, um, you know, some of these uh, natural areas and things that we get to enjoy and experience. Um, so the first um, idea on our website is to take a nature walk, um, go around a local trail. You can bring a bag to collect trash, which is always a great idea. I am like known for wherever I go, I've got like handful of <laughs> garbage <laughs> and I just keep like a garbage bag in my car and I was throwing it away. And my kids are always like, oh, there's mom picking up her trash again. Uh, but it's just like, it's, you know, just something that like I do and it's just like part of, you know, part of my, you know, life that I don't really think about. It's just like such a habit. Um, and also something else that I talked about earlier this week on Instagram is how um, having just like an intentional short little burst of nature time makes such a big difference for like mental health and for feeling grounded and for feeling connected. Um, so something it's actually been my New Year's resolution for the last few years and sometimes I'm better at it than others, but just really intentionally like if I haven't spent time outside during a day, I try and go out for even just five minutes. Um, if I can like take a walk, that's great. If I can get a workout in even better, but if I don't have time for all of that, just five minutes where I am focusing on, you know, breathing the fresh air and looking at the trees and hearing the birds and everything that goes into this, um, you know, connecting with our surroundings, um, you know, in my pretty, you know, unremarkable suburban neighborhood, right? I'm not like out in the wild, which is even better. And I love doing that too, but just being like really intentional, even for just a few minutes every day makes such a big difference in um, my mental health and also how connected I feel um, with creation and with other people, honestly, because you kind of have that perspective of, you know, being part of something bigger, being connected in a way um, that we are to um, our earth and to, um, to all the things that God has created for us. So, um, that is one of my personal favorite, very low barrier to entry ways of just like grounding myself and, and having a connection with things. Yeah. And I just add that I think, um, 
nature is really a physical, the, the best physical representation of God's love for us. And I think that when we understand creation, when we understand nature, we better understand our creator and we better understand the divine when we do that. And so it's not surprising, as Christy mentioned already, that that being in nature is so good for mental health. And it actually has been shown in the research that that is the case. It actually decreases um, cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone. So of the, of the six things that have been proven in research to help reduce stress levels, being outside is one of them. And going along with that, if you're also walking or exercising, that's another one too. The third one is meditation. So if you're outside and you're meditating, if you're thinking about nature, if you're observing it, if you're enjoying it, I think all three of those things at once really helps to decrease those cortisol levels and, and helps with the stress in your life. So it's very, very therapeutic, I think, to, to get outside. And, and she also mentioned that, that the connection with your community. I know when I go for a walk or run in the morning, I see so many people. And if I'm, if I'm consistent about the time that I go, I see the same people every day. So it's kind of fun to like, you know, nod and wave to them. And, and you kind of get to know like who to expect to see every morning. And it does feel like, like you're part of the community when you're not just in your car, but you're out, you're outside and you're walking and you're meeting and saying hi to other people. So it's very, very therapeutic. Yeah. Like my, <laughs> My kids have, you know, our kind of go outside routine, especially during the summer, and they know all of the neighborhood dogs. And so that's also like, we kind of think a lot of times, like, you know, trees and grass and all of that, yes, is absolutely nature, but like animals are also nature and even domesticated ones, like, you know, interacting with all these different, amazingly diverse forms of creation um, is just a good reminder that, you know, God's love is big and his, you know, just, he created all of these things. And, um, I love, um, I don't know if any of you have read, uh, Braining Sweetgrass, which is a book. If you talk to me for even like 15 minutes, I will probably bring up, <laughs> uh, because it's just, it's such a lovely book. It's by, um, Robin Wall Kimmerer, who's a, um, professor and an indigenous author. And she talks a lot about how, um, like creation is a gift, um, more from a, in, you know, an indigenous faith perspective than a Christian one, but, um, has a lot of really beautiful ideas about, you know, gratitude and how, um, being connected with nature and, um, working to be, to feel native to a place is, um, part of feeling connected with everything else and feeling that gratitude and sort of the reciprocal nurturing that goes into, um, caring for creation and also creation caring for us. So, um, I don't really have anything else to add about, um, you know, a little nature walk. Um, so I think we can move on to another, um, point unless anyone else wants to, um, jump in with anything else. Well, I was, I was just thinking some ways, or if, if people are looking for like a community, like a group kind of thing, if you don't want to just be like, oh, I'm just going to go walk around. Um, I know that if you put in, like type in your state, state parks search, it'll take you to your state, state park page. And then a lot of times there will be events like I, I typed in like Arizona state parks and there's a stargazing um, event and sing along kind of thing in down in Tucson. Um, and I, I can find things that are up in Northern Arizona. It's, it's starting to get heat up here. So they're, they're doing them in different areas where it's a little bit cooler, but you can find events if that's something that interests you and you want to connect with more people community wise and um, in nature, you can find resources on your state park website, and then maybe you can find something nearby where you live, or if you're up for an adventure and, and something new, it, you can definitely use those resources. So um, yes, we, we live near a riparian preserve, and I like to go walk through there, the trails and stuff. Um, but like I said, here in Arizona, it's getting a little bit warm, but you can find different things. So I don't, 
I guess I would say don't limit yourself to just like, well, what is this? But if you really want to get out and um, meet new people or kind of just, or really mingle with different people of your community, check the events on your state park page because um, there's a lot of resources there and events that are planned that just may not be on your radar. So that's just one thing I would I would add. And even like local parks, like um, there's city, city parks, county parks, regional parks. Um, a lot of those will have um, events, especially throughout the summer and just kind of like also natural areas there are lots of different, um, you know, administrative structures who, you know, take care of certain public areas. Um, but if you just Google that area and then Google friends of a lot of times there are groups that, um, have formed to care for specific areas and they're super friendly. Like they want you to come hang out with them. They really do. Um, I've never had a bad experience showing up to a friends of whatever, you know, area meeting, they, they love to have you. They love to have local support. Um, and it's a great way to connect with your community as well as your, um, you know, natural areas that are close to your home. I know that our, our chapter here in Nevada, we, we have partnered with, uh, groups like get outdoors, Nevada, friends of Pittman wash to do trail maintenance, to do trash pickup on earth day and, and other different, um, community cleanup events. And that's really a great way to get involved with your community and with nature at the same time. And I just wanted to mention something quickly about, um, we can actually use technology to help improve our experiences in nature. So there are a lot of apps you can get with trail, um, with trails on them, like trail forks or, um, um, different, I mean, I, we're probably not supposed to advertise, so I shouldn't tell you, but there, if you look it up, you can get apps that will help show you where all the trails are in your local area. If they're open for hiking, walking, mountain biking, can you bring a, a dog with you? It will give you like the trail condition. So for safety, and it, it's, it's a good thing to check that. And then it will just help you to familiarize yourself with what there is in your, in your own community and where you can go and maybe try a different path thing you've taken before a different hike or a different trail and and discover something new and then you can also get on too there are lots of different hiking groups i've noticed in my community that are on on facebook or whatever you can even look it up by your neighborhood and and find a, a hiking group that you might want to get involved in or if you want to get in like a women only hiking group or mountain biking group or whatever there's there are lots of ways to connect with nature and with your community at the same time even just like a local walking group, like lots of neighborhoods have just like people who meet up and, and, you know, get out for walks every day. Um, another thing I like to do that goes along with that, uh, Paulette is I have apps for like plan identification. I have, a, I found a really cool bird one where you can like record the bird singing and it will tell you what bird it is. Yeah. Um, entering like the bird phase of my life. Um, <laughs> but, um, that like knowing about it and, my kids are also very like annoyed because I'm always like, what plant is this? What tree is this? What kind of cactus is this? And I'm always like quizzing my kids, but I think it's like important and helpful to know, like, these are the plants that grow where I live and I should know something about them or at least what their name is, you know? Um, so, and, and my kids are, are a lot more into like taking a picture of the plant and having it identified by an app. They think that's way more fun than mom being like, Plant. you know what plant this is we've talked about it before <laughs> so that's a way to involve like your kids if um if they're maybe a little um less enthusiastic about some of these things as mine tend to be um yeah. well and and I was also thinking that if you know if you are interested in certain things like Paulette was talking about like hiking groups or biking groups different things like that we often like to paddleboard on the Salt River and there's there's local groups that will organize. You don't, you don't have to be a member or anything like that. They'll just organize paddles together. And um, oftentimes they'll organize like a trash pickup paddle because the Salt River has a lot of um, visitors during the day that bring coolers on the river. And you'll just see cans and we've seen people who bring like a, a netted bag and we'll just go and pull up all the aluminum cans that go to the bottom of the river. And 
the bag gets really full. So they'll they'll organize kind of a cleanup paddleboard kind of thing. And it's there's a lot of there, I think really what it comes down to is there's a lot of options for us to get out and and connect and do these things. And I love the plant identification. I do that, Christy, with my kids where we talk about, well, this is our state cactus and this is, and then we start doing the birds and the, oh, that's our state bird. And look what it's, you know, it's nesting in the cactus and don't touch that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, our, don't get too close to the choya because it jumps to your, you know, it sticks to everything. So I, I love to, I talk through the hikes and that too, to educate them. And if you live in a, a place where there's poison ivy, like that's, you know, a good thing for them to know as well you know, plant identification. So I love, I love that part too. Um, I'm trying to think what else was on our list for Simply Connect of ways we, other ways we can connect. Uh, send an email to your local reps or senators in support of land conservation in your area. Paula here is like a pro at that. I'm going to let her take that one. Um, so one thing I just wanted to mention was that, um, Right now, the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, they are responsible for managing about 40% of public lands in our, in our country. And if you live in a Western state, like I do, probably a lot of MWEG members are in Western states, um, you probably have a lot of land that's managed by the BLM in your state. And right now they are actually working on modernizing their national policies to balance conservation with other public land uses. So historically, um, they have prioritized, the BLM has prioritized extractive purposes on the public lands over conservation, over recreation, over wildlife protection, over cultural protection. And so right now they are in the process of trying to modernize that and to make conservation and cultural recognition and wildlife conservation a priority as well. So now's a good time to reach out to your local BLM office in whatever state you're in. Um, they are doing, I know in Nevada, they're doing a actually public comment periods. I was one up in Northern Nevada, so I couldn't make it, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing right now to talk about, to because they really are, BLM really is they manage so many of our of our federal lands, and and just because land is federal does not mean it's protected. I mean, they do they, like I said, they prioritize. There's a, there's a a law that's over 150 years old that prioritizes mining over just about any other um, use of of land. So um, it's a good idea kind of, kind of to know you can actually go to the BLM website and look and see what the projects are that they're planning for in your area. Like you can actually search it by your area and see, okay, what are they, what are they looking at? What are they planning for? And then you can get involved just by clicking right there on their website. Um, so we just had a, a, a big success here in Nevada. I'm sure you've all heard about the um, Avikume National Monument. Um, one of our two newest national monuments that was just created as a national monument um, on March 21st, I think was the day. And um, we as a chapter have been working on that for about two years, but the Fort Mojave uh, tribe has been working on that since the 1990s. So um, it was really, really great to be part of a broad coalition of people and very, very diverse groups of people and conservationists and business owners and local, you know, gateway communities, um, people getting involved because they saw the, the potential of this <clears throat> unique and critical landscape to be protected and conserved. Um, and so it's, it's just, it was really one of the most fulfilling things that I've ever worked on in my life. And it was fun because Christy got to come out and visit it with me and her family, which was really fun. So, and there's my home phone ringing. So I'm gonna mute myself now, but. Yeah, so like Paula mentioned, um, I, I got to go down. It just so happened that I was gonna be in town right after Aviquime was designated a national monument. And we knew that it was coming, but we didn't know when and just like aligned perfectly. And we got to see like the signs when they were very first put up and we've been working on that for a couple of years. So that was really, 
really exciting. Um, so there are a lot of movements out there that if you look for them, you can, you know, lend your support to um, in terms of land conservation. Um, and as Paula pointed out, the BLM, you know, manages a lot of the federal land and it's not protected as we would think of um, in terms of, uh, you know, conservation. Um, it is for public use and that means people can lease it for different activities. There are extracted activities. There's logging, there's all kinds of things that can go on in public lands. Same with the Forest Service. The Forest Service manages quite a big um, chunk of federal land out there. And just because it's managed by the Forest Service doesn't mean that it is conserved. Um, again, there's all kinds of um, leasing that goes on. Um, and that's part of the public use of the land, right? But um, it's important to note the distinction that that doesn't mean that it is um, you know, protected land in any way. Um, there are different, the, it's actually pretty complicated, the, all the different land conservation um, designations, but if there's an area that you love and you want to make sure that it's protected and preserved, um, there are, you can Google it and there are probably um, already movements underway to do that. Um, another thing to do is to look at um, the websites like Paulette mentioned, the BLM website has um, a lot of, these are all federal agencies that require public comments for a, a lot of things that they do. Um, same thing with the Forest Service. If you go to the Forest Service, look at the Forest Service lands in your area, you can see the projects they're working on and you can um, weigh in on those. And I am such an advocate for getting involved with these administrative agencies because it's something the public doesn't do a lot of. Um, and so it's kind of an untapped way for you to participate in government and to um, be a steward over your local area and you know get involved in having your voice heard. Um, your voice carries a lot of wait because not that many members of the public get involved in these things. Um, and they're usually pretty receptive to um, to public comments when, you know, that's their job to listen to them. So let me just mention real quick the America the Beautiful initiative or which is really the 30 by 30 initiative. Maybe people have heard it described that way before, but it's just the goal to protect 30% of our lands and waters by the year 2030. And the reason why this is so important is because um, we are experiencing a biodiversity crisis that um, when we are losing so many different species, it really is going to affect our health and well being as well. And so scientists are saying that in order to prevent this, in order to help mitigate the effects of climate change, we need to preserve and protect 30% of our lands and waters by 2030. So there might be all kinds of initiatives in your local area to that do that. It's going to look different wherever you live. Like if you live in an urban area, it might just mean adding more green spaces in the community or, um, or um, more tree canopies. I mean, it might look different wherever, wherever you are, but, but some local communities have, adopt, have adopted resolutions to support this initiative. I know we have here in my county and my state, but maybe they haven't in all counties and states. So that might be a good thing to contact your local um, county commissioners or, or your districts and your assembly or your, your house and your Senate and say, hey, let's, let's support this. Uh, and let's maybe create a resolution to support this 30 by 30 plan. Yeah, and I think it's important that people understand that the America the Beautiful initiative is like, it's a national thing that is being supported. And if I put a link in the Facebook chat, if people wanna see the annual report and learn more about that, um, this is Department of the Interior. It's supported by the Department of Agriculture, um, Council on Environmental Quality, US Department of Commerce, like this is, this is, several government agencies coming together for um, conservation nationally. So um, I did put a link in there. So if people want to read more about it and maybe write to your representative about that, that they might support it and, and, um, and back that up, that would be, that would be really great thing you could do this week. Another thing too, is pretty much everything that's happening on the national level has a counterpart on the state level. So if you have state-owned land that you would like to see preserved in some way, there's an agency um, that deals with that in your state. And just a Google search can get you to the places where you need to go and state, um, your state 
people are going to be even more receptive because it's a smaller pool of people. Um, you're, if you're a resident, they're going to have um, put a lot of weight towards your comments. Um, so state um, land management is also um, an issue in a, in a way you can um, weigh in if, if federal government seems kind of big and intimidating. Um, you can always go more local. There's there are these structures on almost every level of government. So if something seems like too much, just go down a level, um, you know, make it more local, make it more, um, you know, relevant to you and to your community. So um, there's always a way to, to get involved um, at, at every level. Yes, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing these ideas with us and these resources that people can go and um, come up with their own their own ideas and activities that they can do to create uh, connect with creation this week or throughout this summer. Now, just a reminder, if you are following along with our Simply Connect for this summer, you don't necessarily have to go in order. Um, you could maybe do a little bucket list for your summer um, plans while you're traveling, if you have trips with your family planned that you could kind of pencil in like, this is what I want to do here or, or just different things. So these are just some ideas um, that we are sharing with our members and hope that you want to share with other, you know, other people within your community and maybe get them on board. Um, if you have people from church that you'd like to share it with, um, I was actually supposed to go to a brunch today and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give each of them a copy of the Simply Connect idea list, you can print it from the MWAG website and just share it with them and say, hey, this is something you could do for the summer if you're looking for some ideas. So I'm just going to throw that out there. If you want to take it to a ministering appointment, that's all I'm going to say. So we are so glad next week we're going to talk about connecting with cultures and we hope that you will join us and that you'll um, participate with us with Simply Connect and please share your um, experiences. And if you have pictures, we'd love to see those in the Facebook discussion group chat. Um, share them with us so we can see what our members are doing. Anyway, we will see you all next week. Thank you, Christy and Paulette for being here with me today. And bye-bye.